Good morning. They say gardening is good therapy. And boy, after a day of IT difficulties, I certainly need some therapy. Hello and welcome. I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops. And flowers start the online flower arranging classes. Now, if you enjoy this kind of novice gardening content, or oh, particularly if you fancy having a laugh at how I'm messing everything up in the garden, I'd love it if you subscribed to my channel. Look out for the big red button underneath the video description. Click it, and then if you ring, tap the notification bell next to it, you'll always know when I upload a new video. So, I've been to our regular street market. I've actually bought myself three dahlias. I've got a pinky purple one down on the side. So if you've been following along with my no dig gardening journey, <coughs> you'll know that when I've been buying my plants, I have been momentarily resting them in containers because I'm waiting for my soil to become enriched. Is that the right word? Because I've been mulching it. I haven't been digging them, the, um, the goodness into the soil. I've been letting the worms do their thing. Though, of course, when you actually want to plant something in the ground, you do have to dig, don't you? So is the no-dig method only in relation to how you improve the soil rather than how you actually plant things in the garden? As you can tell, I'm a total novice. So that's today's job. So the reason I'm planting them in is because, hello, Kate. Kate's been giving me some advice in the comments and others of you have been sharing your advice with me over on Instagram. You'll find me at flower start with an underscore at the end. So the reason I need to plant these actually in the ground is because I haven't got any big pots left to plant anything else in. And, I, and they have been sitting just on the, the bed where I'm thinking of putting them, but I can see that they've got lots of roof go growth shine, uh, coming through. So they do really need to be planted. So my first job is to water them. So I'm going to head on over to the water butt and just submerge them down a little bit. And actually, as I think about that, I've been having problems with the water butt. I'll explain in a moment. Um, because the flowers, the plants are in flower, Every time I tip them into the water butt, they just become a little bit fragile. So I'm sort of going deeper and deeper into the water butt and then worrying that when I take my flowers out of the water butt, that I'm going to knock them. So as I'm trying to be a flower farmer, I thought what I would do today is to harvest some of my flowers before I um, make them prone to damage by submerging them into my water butt to make sure the root ball is fully watered before I plant them in the hole. So shall we do that? And that which leads me on to another question. How do you know where to cut your flowers? So I'm not cutting, I'm not deadheading. I'm cutting because I want to grow my own flowers to arrange indoors. So I teach flower arranging classes. It'd be quite nice to be able to take homegrown flowers to class. But primarily it's just for my own personal enjoyment. So <laughs> another thing I think I might have got wrong, when I bought these flowers from the market store, they didn't have the little plant tag in them. So I can remember that Deborah, if you're watching, advised me that just to make sure when I buy my plants for cutting to make sure they're not dwarf varieties and comparing the size of my dahlias to the ones that my husband's already got established in the garden. I think these are dwarf varieties. His are at least twice the height, although of course they've been established throughout the whole of the summer season. So I did think these were normal tall ones, but in hindsight I think it was probably because in the, on the market store, they were lifted up on a bench and I got um, misled by the, the, the height they appeared to be as I walked past them. I thought they were sort of a good mid-thigh height on me. So I'm trying to work out how I can cut these down. With the, the problem being that if I'm cutting for length, I'm then sacrificing buds which will never develop into flowers. But I guess that's the harsh reality if you're trying to become 
I say with a big a tongue in my cheek, a flower farmer. So come with me and let's see whether I can crop some of these flowers and um, keep me company. Let me know in the comments what you think I should be doing. So I have gone a little bit of prep, so it's always best, even though it's nice and cool. It's about half past seven in the morning. I've got myself a jug of water to act as a bucket and my flowers here. So I'm going to wend my way down as deep as I can go without killing the whole plant. give myself a flower. So I'm taking off the side leaf so it just sits in water for a moment. So I reckon I can pick four flowers off here. I should have brought my compost bucket around. So it's about delving in really deep. An actual fact, they look quite pretty, don't they? Just sitting there in a jug. So cut and plonk is a really great way of arranging flowers. And of course, if you've got more time or more inclination, you can get more creative with the way that you arrange your flowers. So <laughs> I've still got some buds left, but I've got most of them in the bucket. So making a little production line here. So. The problem I've had, you can see here, that this bud has, it's fallen off really, I'm going to pinch that off. And it's just become vulnerable because I've been dipping these dahlias into the uh, water barrel. Actually, that looks quite nice with a red jug and then red and white flowers in it. So down, down, down. So I've taken the advice Donna from Busy Bee Blooms on Instagram was the one that recommended, I've only got a small patch, is to make sure I buy my flowers, my plants in different colours. So if you were doing you know, proper garden designing, you would probably have, um, you know, a patch of, you know, three, four, five white dahlias and that would be the look that you were going for if you were having, you know, a white room in your garden. Because I am cutting for arranging, I want different colours and therefore I have gone for this rather speckled looking approach. So five dahlias from the red, but I've still got some buds left. And then my pink. So I've only got one stem there that's ready for cutting, but it's got two side shoots on it. So they won't flower, but they will add a little bit of textural contrast in my arrangement. So when you're arranging flowers, it's not always about the, the big flower. You want a little bit of contrast, and sometimes you can do that with having different flowers, but also you get that contrast within a single flower because you get it when it's in bud, part open and when it's fully open. I'm going to walk across and get my compost bucket. Try to tidy up along the way and not make a huge mess. So then I want to take my dahlias and put them into the water barrel just so the root ball is well and truly um, wet. So the water in the barrel is about up to here at the moment. We did have quite a lot of rain at the end of last week so it filled up because I've been watering my plants through the week. And this is the problem I've got, trying to get them out of that hole without damaging them. But I'm glad that I have cut off the blooms that I wanted to use anyway for my flower arranging. So it's quite nice being out in the garden this day in the morning. I can hear some birds chattering. I've left the dog in the house. The rule is that she's not allowed out 
before eight o'clock in order that she doesn't disturb the neighbours with her good morning barking. I can hear the bubbles rising. And when the bubbles have stopped, I'll lift the dahlia out of the water barrel. So let's take those round to where I'm going to plant them. And at this point, I think I'm probably going to put on my gardening gloves. Can you see the big hole that I've made? I have done a little bit of prep. So yesterday evening, I came out into the garden and I thought, well, the one thing I don't like about gardening is I don't like digging holes. <laughs> and um, I had to find the right equipment. So first of all, I started digging here and got down through my, you know, 10... 12, 15 centimetres of mulch and soil and then I hit, you know, I thought I'd found a treasure chest. It turned out to be a concrete paving stone and I couldn't quite understand what, it was get, what was happening. And then as I cleared the soil off, I realised that it was the same pattern of paving stone as the ones we've got on our garden path and then remembered what used to be here. This is where we used to have a rabbit hutch a very deluxe rabbit hutch and because we have um, foxes that come and visit the garden um, I think the paving slab here and the subsequent bricks that I dug up and I don't think you can see it that's in shot that the, the waste of plastic lining bags that the, the little run had been fox proofed so I was having to dig all that up so the thing I absolutely hate about gardening is the digging. I just find I'm so ineffectual with it. So is there a special kind of <laughs> digging style? My husband was having a, a right laugh as I was doing this last night, but quite clearly wasn't intending <laughs> to help me at all. So actually it's not too bad there, but I had, I did water the hole last night in preparation for doing the planting today. I did pre-water the hole to make it really good. So the question for me is how deep do I dig my hole? So what's amazed me about digging the hole is it's like I've made, you know, when you're at the beach and you're making sandcastles as a child, it's just like I've got this excavation, this quarry in front of me. And whenever I watch gardening programs or YouTubers who garden, they seem to have these really perfect round holes that they've used the, um, the, the, the plant pot that they flout their plants in to sort of guide them as to how um, big the hole should be. And I just, I just couldn't do that. Um, so, again, this is the reason why I think container planting seems so much easier. You don't have to dig a hole because the container's already got a big hole in it. So I wonder whether perhaps now, when I put this pot down, that I've actually, lo and behold, dug my hole too deep. Am I right in saying that when you put your, your, your plant into the ground, the soil height should remain the same. So in me trying to get enough space to plant three dahlias, I think I have actually um, dug a hole that's too deep, rather annoyingly. So <laughs> I'm having a bit of muddy play here today. So perhaps it is good that it's first thing in the morning. It's reasonably cool. I haven't had my shower yet. I keep finding a little bit of plastic in the garden. So finding that's the right height squeezing out oh look at that so it well and truly pot bound and actually some of the leaves are yellowing so is that my fault there's the roots so you have to tease the roots but what's all this about here the yellow stuff is that because it's been um, trapped in the pot so I just pull those off make it look neat 
So I'm going to point, uh, plant in a group of three. So again, my husband did have a little bit of a giggle because he said, I thought dahlias needed full sun. So in my eyes, this is full sun. So we have a south facing garden, but there's loads and loads of trees at that end. So the sunshine is very diffused. The east sun comes over here, but actually what this bed gets is quite intense evening sunshine. So for me, I know that's not full sunshine in the baking heat of the day, but I don't see this is going to be a problem having them here. But what eventually will happen is we've got the bay tree there that was cut down and that's why we put up the trellis. Did you see the video last week about that? And then above me, we've got a pear tree with all the pears tantalizingly too far to high to pick up they must be three and a half to four meters high so what we have to do is wait till the pears fall immediately pick them up and then eat them so yes i accept that there are trees around about but my plan this time round is to not let that bay get out of control i'm just going to get the last dahlia and to trim it back it was a bit of a brute and then like all plants in the garden I said, if you don't tell them who's a boss, they get too tall. And then they become harder and harder to keep under control. We had a eucalyptus tree once that was like that. So I asked my husband to, if we could have a eucalyptus. I think he'd saved one from Woolworths. You know, they used to have plants in there and they were all a bit, he's a bit big draggled. And eucalyptus would be handy for flower arranging, but it grew so fast. Within a couple of years, it was as tall as the house. And then all the lovely, nice growth is right at the top. And then you find the lower branches then eventually become too tall for you to actually pick. So I'm planting these in a group of three. Is that too close together though? And, and having seen them in the pots when they've been slightly elevated, they look much more impressive. And now they just look sort of short and squat. And again, that's another flower arranging thing. If you want your flower arrangers, you know, your finished flower arrangement to look really impressive, you need to lift it up off the table a little bit. So that might mean I've got some old breadboards that I use as huge coasters really to protect my polished surfaces. Or you've got a, you know, a short stack of vintage books or something like that, or book, hardback books in the charity shop, you've taken the covers off. Just if you just lift things up, it just makes the overall arrangement look so much bigger. And now I've taken these out of their pots so they've automatically shrunk, I don't know how deep the pot is, 12 centimetres, and they're just looking quite short and squat. So compared to the natural ground level, I still need to raise that up a bit like that, and I think I need to do the same over here as well. I'm, I'm sort of regretting my actions with my digging. So having thought I wasn't a very good digger, I have <laughs> dug slightly deeper than I perhaps needed to. And I am going to separate them out so that I can visually see them as three separate plants rather than one big plant that's got multicolored flowers on it. So I think that is how I want it. And it means as well, if they do grow a bit bigger, I can actually get to them. So then, a bit like a child in a sandpit, this hole, I got so much soil that I dug up, but it was quite amusing because I've noticed that with my mulch it is disappearing so the worms are doing their job but there's was well, this one patch where it was just all lying straight on top of the you know on the surface top and that was obviously where the um paving slab was so it wasn't um you know the worms couldn't get over and around the paving slab and now i'm thinking i should have planted the dahlia that was furthest away from the soil pile first so I didn't have to travel my soil quite so far around the first plant. So the good, on the good side of having to dig that big hole, I found myself some more bricks. So I'll be able to use those as stepping stones to go around my planting so I'm not compacting my soil that I'm trying not to, you know, 
to dig, trying to, you know, hover above the soil. I do seem to have, yeah, there's an awful lot of soil there. So how do you dig small holes? Was I just doing it wrong with using a spade? So I was using my, it was the number two spade. So it's slightly rusty. I spade out a nice silvery spade, stainless steel spade that was on a special hook in the shed. But as soon as I started hitting that paving slab, I did go and ask my husband what he thought I ought to do. And then he did say, could I not use his really nice spade because he didn't want it getting damaged. So, oh, this is <laughs> it's hard work, isn't it? I'm not entirely sure what you can see. Come and come and have a closer look and have a little bit of a, a giggle about what I'm doing. There we are. They are in the ground. So the other thing my husband was concerned about was that I was encroaching into the agreed space. So this strip of ground is about three metres by, well, it's two meters, probably two metres at the kitchen window end three metres at the other end and it's about 10 metres long and he wanted to lawn it all. So I am encroaching a little bit, but I do believe that we, we said that the, the boundary was now going to be the base of the pear tree. And um, he was worried when I was digging up that I was affecting the roots of this little mountain, no, not mountain ash, it's a Japanese maple because he's particularly partial to Japanese maple. I don't really like them very much. But yes, there are roots, but equally there's roots from the, presumably from the pear tree and the bay tree. I could see roots in the, in the garden, and I think I could see some bindweed roots as well, so the, the white spaghetti. So I picked those out. So just trying to return my natural soil level back to its natural soil level we're smoothing it all out again I think I need a little bit over this side around the corner and then so I've healed it in with my hands to make sure it's nice and compact, not too loose. Is that air bubbles you do that for? Or just stability, combination of the two. And then over here as well. This is like having a workout. I think that's all all right there. And then to water them in. So I watered the hole last night look like a little mud pit. I've soaked the root balls this morning. One final water in with quite a generous amount of water. So in last week's video I was asking advice about my comfrey fertiliser. So my husband's been making comfrey tea and it was comfrey. There was an unmarked gallon container and he said, yes, that was the comfrey. And his recommendation was a, just a quick dash of the comfrey tea in each watering can full. And that would help fertilize my plants. So I think actually that is what I'm going to do next. So container plants, a bit of that morning sunshine. They need watering. So stacking my pots up. What do you do with your pots? So we just seem to have a plastic mountain of pots. So I stack them up in the shed and then get rid of them later. So I am plunging my watering can into the water barrel and then 
fertiliser time next. So I've decided, my husband feeds on a Friday, I have decided that every time I make a video, or filming, that was how I was going today, do it, filming feed. So every time I film a, film a video in the garden, that I will water my plants. So you can see the sunshine's coming in. There is my comfrey tea, my husband's comfrey tea. So I'm literally going to do a tablespoon worth, a quick slosh, and then I can water my flowers that are in the containers. So let's go. Slosh number one, slosh number two. Lid back on, step back carefully. So with my Cosmos, it is browning quite a lot. Is that just the age of the plant? It's coming towards, you know, it, for me they're only just flowering, but it is sort of towards the end of the summer months. Or is that lack of nutrition? So I will say that when I water this one, I have to sort of, it rests on the surface, and then I have to come back when it's all dribbled in and then water it again. And I think it's probably, I've squeezed three plants into a space that wasn't really big enough for three plants. So I think it's quite compacted. So this is my mixed um, pot. So it's Astrantia, oh, Physostegia, Pink Cosmos, Delphinium, and something being with C that's gone over. My little bit of Delphinium I cut back last week. That pot, it, despite the drainage holes, seems to hold water quite well. And then my water hungry hydrangeas will get down into the pot. And give that a good old water. So because I'm trying to crop my flowers to enjoy indoors. I am going to crop my flowers to enjoy indoors. And this is what I wanted. I wanted that feeling of abundance. So I will, it's nice looking at the flowers in the garden from the kitchen window, so, but I want to be able to enjoy them. That's my whole raison d'etre for the garden. So look at this. This is my zinnia. So, a couple of weeks ago, I took the, the central zinnia out and the two shoots have actually grown up either side. So this one I can cut along and put that down into my water bucket. And then I've never actually cut any of the pink cosmos to enjoy. So trying not to trample on my earth, I'm going to come round from the other side and use my little brick paving stones, a little bit of a balancing act. And the same thing, trying to cut long for a vase, but in doing so, realizing I've got almost three buds on there that are just never going to come into flower. That one there, I think, actually needs deadheading. Um, so I'm going to take the largest, more open flowers. So I've, I've got you know, a bit of colour still. With the Physostegia, I think that might be going over, so I might be quite harsh with my cutting back. Is this one of these plants that if you do trim it right back, it will burst again into flower? We'll have to wait and see. So again, I'm cutting for length here. And I quite like when the flowers have gone over, they look a little bit like, you know, a sort of foxglove formation. They do leave the, the um, casings around the buds are rather nice. And look, it's gone, it's gone to seed. Oh, I have to come and show you that. That's quite exciting. But can you see the little, it's got little black seeds in there. So will they just, okay, I'm just such a novice. Will they self-seed? I kind of want everything to self-seed in the garden. 
because I can't be bothered growing seeds. I'm, I'm not interested in having things on my kitchen window, so we haven't got a greenhouse. Um, I'm rather hoping my sister down the road might do some growing for me as a Christmas present. But will the seeds anyway just scatter around and do their own thing? Who knows? But I quite like, in flowering, it almost looks like an ear of corn, doesn't it? Some wheat growing. So I quite like that. I like it for the flowers. So it's nothing like a foxglove, but you know the way you can sort of put your finger inside a foxglove flower. So that is quite a good haul. So again, I want to take off the lower leaves and get those to sit in my bucket for a while, rather than just, you know, the dream of having a basket and skipping around your garden in the morning. It's not a good start for your flowers. They need to go in water straight away. So that's that. And then I will come back and pick some of my dahlia, oh, dahlias, I've done the dahlias already, cosmos is what I want to say. And I've got a nice lot, well for me, you know, three stems of astrantia as well. So again here, when I start to cut, when I've been deadheading but just sort of pinching between my finger and thumb, so it sort of takes the flower off, but it doesn't take the stalky bit off. So if I'm here with my floristry scissors, I might as well take the stalky bit off. So, for instance, a nice, decent length stem for a flower ranger, you know, an arm length of flower. It's got the main flower, but it's got two one centimetre buds here. And I can see, you know, half a centimetre has got... Small, so it's got one, two, three, four, five buds on that, and I've just cut it so I can have the enjoyment of that flower. So I guess the, the, the if I'm going to cut like this, I guess you need to have more plants than you think you need because you're only going to get the product productivity out of a reduced number of stems. Is that the way I should think about it? So instead of buying in, you know. I've got three in that tub, perhaps next year if I want to have a nice show of cosmos to enjoy indoors, do I need to have more than three plants? That is the question. So my little bucket here is getting quite full up. It makes it look like I've got my own little harvest festival, which is exactly what I wanted. So let's have another delve down. So my Delphinium has gone over, and this is looking really interesting as well. I'm going to cut that right down. But just look at those lovely seed heads. So I could use that in a flower arrangement as well. If I picked off all the spent blossom, it gives me a nice structural form, which would be quite interesting to have in an arrangement. It's going to take a little bit of time to, to fluff all this off, but you know cup of tea in one hand and a bit of fiddle in the other. I could do that. I quite like the fact that you know, getting double duty out of everything. You enjoy it in the garden, you know, as a bud and then you pick it and then you have it as a cut flower or you leave some in the garden and then you can see that again they are with the seed heads that are developing. Part of me thought perhaps I ought to leave it for the seed head. And the other part of me thought, Julie, you're never going to grow these. You might as well enjoy it for its textual interest. So let's go round and find the Astrantia, which has been very good. I think I just bought one Astrantia plant. We have had it before in the garden, the white variety. So I think I will definitely grow this again. It's been a really good grower. So I've taken two full heads. I think actually I'm going to cut more because I can see this, this flower looks absolutely beautiful, but I can definitely see the difference between the older blooms and there's a, a newer one just coming up. So rather than getting those older ones to hang on, perhaps if I cut the older ones down, it will be a bit more, a bit braver with my cropping. But it might, would it encourage the new shoots to come up? So I've just left. I've got four of them left now. So another thing to enjoy. So the next best thing, I feel like I've done my housework in the garden. I've planted my dahlias. 
I could do with um, a little light weeding. We've talked before about whether the weeds in my garden are, or the seedlings, whether they are weeds or whether they are going to be flowers. I've got little bits of plastic everywhere. Um, so I've got my little fork here. So the bits, I can see there's bits of grass. I just sort of dig them out with my hand with, while using the fork. There's still a few things I'm not sure about. But what I've decided is that I'm, I'm looking at the, the patch of geranium. We have got several kinds of geranium, native geraniums in the garden. And there's, I like the crane's bill geranium, which is tall and purple. And we've got a, a quite a deep pink one. But it's also quite an insignificant, almost like a pale spidery leaf. And I'm, I can't remember now which is which, but if this turns out to be the one with the pale spidery petal, I should say, I'm going to be much more, um, much less forgiving with this patch because I don't like it. It's no good for flower arranging. It's just too spotty and dotty. I want something that's got a bit more substance and impact to it. So shall we see whether we can arrange our, the flowers and have them for nice decorative effects? So I must remember to keep my, f my, my gardening fork and my scissors together, adjust the camera angle and see whether you can get a little bit closer. This is really when I need a second camera person in the garden and then you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I wonder if I come forward like that. Can you see? We'll have to have a little look. What I could do is turn my compost bucket upside down and that then would make a little flower arranging table. Should I do that? There's hardly anything in the compost bucket apart from some rainwater. So I've got myself uh, an earthenware vase. I think actually, if you can bear being jiggled around a bit, I might reduce the height of the tripod legs. slightly closer. So my flowers, I think they look rather nice, just as they are. You know, it's a cut and plonk, perfectly acceptable, but I do feel they've been squished into the container a bit, so I'm going to um, arrange them more artfully. So how am I going to start? What I like to do normally, my dahlias are quite short, and my cosmos is quite long. So in my vase of water here, I've got lots of water in here and I've actually put some chicken wire in the top because I just want to support my flowers. All the flowers I've got have got quite narrow stems. So um, I didn't want them falling around. Sometimes if you've got quite an open neck on your container, if you put the flowers in, they just slop to one side. So I've chosen a container with quite a, a small opening and then packed the, I've just got a piece of chicken wire that I've looped over, there's a little lip on the top of the vase, so I've just looped it over there. So, sliding the flowers through the chicken wire, and of course they will then stay where you put them because they're getting a little bit of support. And these have got, although they straight stems, they've got a little natural, um, curve to them so they are doing their own thing i've got the sun in my eyes now which is a good thing isn't it the sun shining in your eyes so normally flower rangers like to use odd numbers by coincidence i have actually got three cosmos but that was by accident rather than design so i'm i'm just putting them into the vase and to begin with you just need to get something in the vase just to to get a bit of solidity. I'm, I am tempted to use my defunct delphinium stem. If I just sort of 
tease it with my fingers, hopefully the old bits of petal will just fall away. And I'm then left with um, an individual stem, a, a seed head that's starting to mature. So bright lime green seed head. It reminds me a little bit of the shape of the seed head of the Aquilegia. I, I quite like that. I quite like the simple forms of Aquilegia, but I think I prefer the seed heads to the actual flower. So again, it's just got a bit of dominance here. So I'm going to take the leaves off because it's the developing seed head that interests me, not the leaves. And how tall am I going to go? Well, it depends how much space you've got for your arrangement, but it's always nice to go tall because the bigger your arrangement you make, the more impressive it looks. And then, you know, the plaudits just start coming in because it just looks absolutely gorgeous. You could make a tiny arrangement with the same number of flowers, but I would say go big. Go big or go home. And then as the days pass, good practice every three or four days is to recut your flower stems. So consequently, your arrangement does get shorter. And then as some of the flowers you know, go over, they die. You just pull them out of the vase. And, you know, you can sort of, if you did a time lapse, your half flower arrangement, which is sort of, creep down over time. So let's get in some of the Astrantia. I've got a sort of split stem there, so I might cut that side shoot off. So I could have a long piece here coming over the edge of the vase and a shorter piece coming that way. When you're arranging your flowers as well, not only thinking about you know, how tall your arrangement can be, but also where you're going to put it. So for me, normally my arrangements back up against the wall, so I don't need to have my arrangement looking pretty all the way round. It just needs to look good from the front. And when I say the front, I actually mean the front three quarters, because you never just have a sort of two-dimensional um, flower arrangement. So perhaps up now, I'll decide which way is front. So I think I want to have my, my cosmos facing towards the front a little bit. And the Astrantia, again, a straight flower, but because of the way they've been growing, partly obscured under my overhanging lilac tree come ivy tree, they, they have arched to move towards the sun a little bit. And then look, the start of the show, my single cosmos. So pinch off any leaves that will be in the bucket, recut the stem. I'm thinking I could come up quite tall with this as well, because then it starts to talk to that delphinium spike and I will, so it's a straight flower the head is a little bit heavier so it's nodding back a little bit and then my group of ears of wheat or my physostegia I will have to take off a few more leaves at the bottom I think so just do that carefully I have many a time thought I was taking the leaves off and then the flower heads all popped off so with these Always a good idea every time you take your flowers out of water to recut the stem. I can do that at once. And I'm going to put these in where I find a gap. So this is why I wanted abundance in my garden. So that I could do things like this. And there's nothing nicer than a really full vase of flowers that you've grown yourself. Even though I feel like really I've just caretaken them because I bought these all from the plant stall in town and somebody else has been looking after them. So I've, actually this is all pink and white now I look at it. So I'm going to put a bit more pink in with my, oh I've got three again. Perhaps I'm just programmed to pick things in threes. So the three cosmos, so again these are varying heights. So I'm going to put my tallest one in to the centre. So again that's sort of talking to the height of the zinnia and the delphinium and then I'm going to have the two shorter ones coming over to me with the bottom ones almost just sort of pinging over the edge of the container and then it's my dahlias but they're all on quite short stems because I think I've picked a dwarf variety of dahlia but if I make sure my water is really topped up in the vase all that I need to have is for the the ends of the dahlias to be in water. Dahlias, though, can be a bit tricky as a cut flower, and um, they really need fresh water every single day. So I will be, you know, 
perhaps paying more attention to this vase of flowers because I've grown them myself than I would if I'd bought something from the supermarket or I could just think, oh, that's just easily replaceable. So what I will do is hold the mouth of the vase over the sink, imagine this, the vase, to tip the water out and then refill under the tap to sort of flush out any detritus. And then it, the trick is to make sure that when you've, you've, um, your, your flowers have gone over, is, is to absolutely be fastidious about cleaning your vase so it's absolutely spotless the next time. There's nothing worse if you want to arrange flowers and you think, oh, I can't use that vase, it's dirty. But if you wash your vases after you've finished using them so they're ready for next time, it just saves you a lot of hassle. So I'm going in with my red dahlias first, wiggling, I'm sort of corkscrewing these down because I'm having difficulty now finding a gap amongst that chicken wire. So again, I like to layer up like with like, so although it's dahlias next, I'm using all the red dahlias first and getting those into my vase. I always find dahlias a bit peculiar, they're a very fashionable flower, but the heads always sit in a really strange way. Tiny dahlia there, so that's going to have to go really low down. Just have its neck poking out on the top of my vase. Wiggle, wiggle. right down there and then I've only got my one pink dahlia so what I'm going to do with the height of the delphinium then the physostegia and then my zinnia I'm going to have this at the bottom of that sort of column of flowers rising up out of my container so that the purple then becomes a, a sort of continuation of the line so you go dahlia Zinnia, Chrysostegia, and then the height of the um, Delphinium behind. And then I've got a few whites. So yes, I seem to have made um, a harmony of pinks and whites. Perhaps, well, it's not surprising because that's what I've got growing in the garden, but it wasn't until I put them together that I realised how well they go together. So what I'll do, you probably can't see particularly clearly what I am doing with the arranging, but I will put a photograph in on the community tab pages, the, 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 the posts page of um, YouTube, and also I'll post a picture in my YouTube group. So if you're not already a member of my flower arranging group on YouTube, where we share our thrifted signs, our garden and flower related crafts that... Um, it's the place to be for all the chat. And if you want to show off what you've been doing, we can all give you a round of applause. So you'll find the link to that in the description underneath this video. And um, or if you search for Flower Start World in Facebook, click the join button. There's a couple of questions you have to answer just so I can weed out the bots. And then we can get chatting. So I think probably I might just come back and show you this so you can actually see what I've done. And then I think, that's why I turn the camera around, <gasps> give you a headache that way. And then the sun will be behind me. A view with the lawn, I might just raise you up a little bit and then I can show you. Oh, it does look really good. My finished vase arrangement. So going from the cut and plonk where everything was just sitting down, um, in, in the water, I've now got something that's much more elegant. So notice I've chosen quite a long vase. So overall, that height of that arrangement is, um, you know, it's as long as my arm from the bottom of the vase right to the top of this delphinium bud. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll catch up with you in the garden next week. <laughs>